for joining in the conference. Everyone has a voice. Tonight, I will also be joined by Mrs. Jafari. Jafari, graduate from the University of Punjab, India, Mewal Maidan Shar, or the province of Afghanistan, and has recently received International Women of Courage Award. With the Baral Engineer, National Secretary, Nepal Youth Congress, former Vice President, Nepal Student Congress at Okra University, and first runner up Super Model. Mr. Israq Hoshan, graduate from University of Hertfordshire, United Kingdom, engineer, politician, and mayor candidate, Dhaka South City Corporation, Dhaka, Bangladesh. Mr. Yasir Haidar, graduate from Bhavanipur, Gujarati Education Society College, former National Secretary of Tinamul Youth Congress, worker and social activist, India. Mr. Sekandar Mamtaz Raj, graduate from the University of Punjab and College of Northwestern West London, President People Youth Organization, Rahul Bindi, Pakistan. Please welcome Mr. Israq Hoshel. Mr. Hoshel, you are a politician. You are very much active and have enhanced your activities like to direct communication with your people, especially your electoral arena. As a responsible politician, how are you being facilitated the people in this pandemic? Please share your experience with us, mentioning your ways of assistance to people. Okay. <clears throat> Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim First of all, I would like to thank all the speakers who have joined us here today. And uh, uh, assalamu alaikum, namaste to all the viewers all around the world and everyone else who's watching. I'd also like to especially thank Mr. Zubair for organizing such a regionally cooperating program because, you know, we can all learn from each other. We have, we are neighbors, we have similar culture. So it's very good that you have taken such initiative. It's excellent, actually. Really appreciate that. I would like to introduce myself shortly then before I get into the uh, work that I have done so far. My name is Ishra Hussain and uh, I have been uh, the mayor candidate from Dhaka South recently. Uh, the elections were held on 1st of February. Um, before I say anything, I don't know if uh, any of the speakers here are aware that uh, Bangladesh currently we do not have, um, we are not in a democratic process for the past 13 years and there is no credible elections are being held. But that is a different topic. But since it's relevant to what I'm about to say next, as I said, that's why I mentioned that. Um, well, you know, since we are not in the government and we are also struggling to get back into democracy, it's very hard for an opposition party to uh, contribute or assist the people out there because we do not have the budget or the infrastructure or the access to the power or the... Um, uh, manage the hospitals, the healthcare system, etc. It's done by the government. So far, I would say that, uh, in a nutshell, the government has not managed the pandemic so well. However, being a responsible democratic party, we have a commitment towards the people of uh, um, Bangladesh, and every uh, political member of Bangladesh Nationalist Party have contributed to their relevant constituencies. Um, as directed by our party chairman, uh, acting chairman, Mr. Tariq Rahman. So what we did is uh, when the pandemic was just about to start uh, end of February, we kind of predicted that it's, you know, this is eventually going to reach Bangladesh because we have a lot of travelers and a huge portion of our population are working abroad. So what we did is uh, we started with public awareness campaign at the end of February where we were distributing leaflets and making people aware that there is uh, such disease that is going to hit us soon and we should be prepared for that. As uh, one of our speakers said, we are, uh, most of the countries here are uh, largely overpopulated and we do not have that health infrastructure. Even the Western countries have struggled so much with the uh, infrastructure they have, which is very much advanced, especially India, right? Mr. Uh, Yasir Haider said it's a very large country and the healthcare system is not big, large enough. And uh, 
then we what we did uh, eventually uh, as the pandemic reached on the 7th of march in bangladesh we were um, handing out hand sanitizers uh, masks ppe and the hand gloves to the people who could not afford it especially people who were working on a day to day basis daily laborers and also frontline workers we tried to assist them with those free products as much as we could um thirdly as the uh, lockdown was enforced around 20th of march um we as you know bangladesh it's we're not very uh, rich country and the system here is not very uh, established like in the western countries where if when they place the lockdown the government was taking care of their uh, needs basic necessities uh, in bangladesh we have a large population who earn on a daily basis they work uh, on a daily basis and usually they do not have that much savings so we predicted there could be a food crisis food shortage so as instructed by our party we uh, conducted food relief programs where we handed out uh, uh, basic food for example rice um, milk powder salt cooking oil etc we did that throughout the country on behalf of bangladesh nationalist party um apart from that we have been uh, pointing out the lackings of our healthcare system to the government so they can rectify it and more or less you know uh, uh betterment for, for the betterment of the healthcare service and uh, we have been constantly conducting awareness program via social media and national media making people aware to uh, stay indoors uh, use masks use ppe when they go out etc um our founder president uh, late president ziaur rahman so there's a foundation ziaur rahman foundation who has conducted uh, very good activities i would say um, as you know when the lockdown was enforced not only um, covid patients but people who needed treatment like regular patients even they could not get access to the healthcare system because uh, every hospital was denying them uh, admittance Uh, without covid tests and at that time we did not have any covid test in bangladesh so what the rahman foundation did we set up a healthcare hotline with over 100 specialist doctors so basically you would uh, call the hotline you speak to a general practitioner and then they would refer you to a specialist doctor if needed so we were delivering a healthcare service to the people at their home uh, apart from that we set up a Uh, hand wash basins throughout the capital in various points uh, we should you know as you know world health care organization said to wash your hands regularly which can help you know uh, sort of you know keep the spreading of the virus under control um uh, we have been giving financial aid we have been helping our workers to uh get access to healthcare where they could not get admitted to the hospital etc and uh, so this has been our role as an opposition party so far mr hoshan mr hoshan yes. uh, your academic career is very rich and you have graduated from england and became engineer instead of being a professional and comfortable life why have you chosen such uncertain career why do you have to input your all efforts years after years anyway what should be the role of young politicians in this subcontinent for their countries and how could they acquire the competent place among people from the people could trust all right <laughs> thank you very much well to answer your the first part of your question um well i studied engineering in the uk um uh, my and my intention was always to come back to bangladesh and uh, create an industrial revolution or take the industrial uh, status uh, status of our country to a higher level where we bring in high tech industry and create new jobs for the younger educated population um secondly uh, uh you said what should be the role of young politicians well i think you know one big thing that we face in bangladesh and i'm sure it's the same because i do follow the politics of subcontinent india what's going on in in west bengal in pakistan 
So there's a lot of conflict between the political parties. So I think when there's a, a division within a country, within um, between the political parties or amongst the political parties, eventually it's harmful for the nation because it draws you back. Of course, there is going to be competition. You know, we all are citizens of our uh, countries and we all have our own duties and roles to play. And we want to coexist. But uh, there will be competition, you know, and that's why we have a system called democracy where people should be able to vote uh, and select the government which they feel is the best to run and manage their country because, you know, it's the people who actually own the country. So as the, the young, uh, as a young politician of my country and, you know, others, honorable guests who have joined here, I think we would all agree that the conflict should be minimized and uh, we should be more tolerant towards each other's ideology. Yes, of course, there will be different ideology, political views, but, you know, if we work together for the betterment of our uh, respective nation, then we can definitely take uh, 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 on the challenges that we face from overpopulation and, you know, uh, uh, the burden on our healthcare system, economic development, poverty, etc. And uh, just move forward and uh, eventually turn this region into a rich, developed uh, uh, continent or subcontinent, if you may call it. Suggest and what I will say in a country like India or say Pakistan or my neighboring friends in Bangladesh or in Nepal, there, when there is a government, there has to be also an opposition, which is a which is better for a country. I believe if there is only Absolutely. one government, like example, uh, say in North Korea. Thank you, Mr. Hoshan. Uh, this is my last question to you because we are in our. Yes. The end of our program. It also a period of your life you are in London and closely observed the connection among the EU countries' relations. In South Asia, what thing or things do you feel lacking, like interconnection, poor bilateral relation, lack of mutual understanding, etc.? As a representative of your politicians, which aspects do you like to give emphasize? Or regional cooperation. Right. Uh, thank you, Jume, for giving me the opportunity to give my last statement. Um, I would like to just um, talk about a few points that um, previous guests have uh, already spoken about. Then I will just finish uh, off. Um, Mr. Sikander Munta said that people are leaving the country because they want to earn. So. I think that's a common problem we have in this region, that there's a, uh, uh, there's a lack of employment opportunities for the youth, especially the educated, the young population who wants to, uh, who are more um, accustomed to technology and they want to move forward, they want to better their lives and increase this, their standard of living. Mr. Zar Zarifa Ghaffari also said that, you know, you have to be a good role model to be a good politician. So, because if you're a politician, you're leading. And if, if you lead... Sorry? Yes, sir. Okay. Can you hear? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, to lead the people by example, uh, you have to be a good role model. That's Miss 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 Lafari said. So, I totally agree with that. And I'll come back to... Uh, Mr. Haider, he, uh, Yasser Haider, he made some very good points, fantastic points. Uh, for example, I can totally relate to the type of politics he's accustomed with, uh, which is a charitable. I'm sure your family has been very charitable to the needy, to the poor, uh, helping uh, all your voters to their small problems when they come, where, you know, their daughter's getting married and they cannot afford, etc. So I come from a similar political background, uh, political family. My father, he was um, a freedom fighter. And uh, later on, he became the mayor of Dhaka for the longest running period. So, you know, I think a connection to the grassroots is very important for a politician. I mean, uh, we have to totally go and mix with them as if we are one of their own. So for them to uh, benefit from us and also to 
follow us as their leaders. You also said about um, criticism of from opposition parties to help you perform as you're in the government. So that is a very good mentality, which I really appreciate that, uh, you know, because freedom of speech and being able to absorb criticism from your opposition will only help you perform better, as you said. Unfortunately, this is something we do not have right now in Bangladesh. There's no democracy, no freedom of speech, no right to talk. And uh, it's almost like, you know, this one party rule state. Uh, we are slow, kind of driven towards that. Uh, however, I would like to say that Bangladesh was formed uh, as a struggle of uh, democracy. In 1970 war, we had a a uh, very nine month long bloody war where a lot of people gave up their lives. And uh, I am proud to say that this is my biggest pride that I'm a son of a freedom fighter. My father passed away last year, end of last year. But uh, so I hold his values, his principles within myself. And our founder president, uh, late president Zia Rahman, he was the one who first announced the independence of Bangladesh. So patriotism and commitment towards people, these are two big qualities I think uh, any politician should have. So if you're patriotic, you have your commitment towards your country and uh, bilateral, if it comes to bilateral relationships, as uh, Zubair's question was uh, earlier on, or, or any national interest, if you're patriotic, then you are able to take decisions for your country that will benefit only your country. And of course, India being our largest neighbor, we're surrounded, almost most of our border is surrounded by India. It is very important that we have a very friendly bilateral relationship, especially your seven sisters is uh, quite remote and they do not have access to port. Recently, Bangladesh signed a transit agreement where you're able to use our Chittagong port and uh, pass goods onto the seven sisters which is very good because we need to transport those goods to the Seven Sisters and uh, for the development of that region. However, it should be on an even ground. It should be on, uh, uh, on a friendly, even friendly relation. So, you know, no one feels like they're being suppressed or forced into uh, some sort That's of decision that the people are not uh, agreed upon. So this is what I would like to add. I think, you know, regional cooperation is very important as we are, you know, very close, especially West Bengal. I mean, there's no difference. Uh, you're talking about Durga Puja. Uh, my, in my constituency, we have a large Hindu population in the waters. So every year they have Durga Puja. I go to uh, the temples, almost 50, 60 of them. So, you know, even culturally, we are very similar. Yes, it's, uh, there's a divide in religion, but, you know, uh, ultimately, we all have to be good human being and serve our people and our country, like Mr. Yasser Haider said, to be a good politician. So I would like to thank uh, Mr. Zubair and Mr. Haider. I learned a lot from our speakers today, all our guests, and uh, I thank you for giving me this opportunity.